Beowulf, Part 1, Grendel, pages 42 to 45. Hrothgar, king of the Danes, has built a wonderful mead hall called Herit, where his subjects congregate and make merry. As this selection opens, a fierce and powerful monster named Grendel invades the mead hall, bringing death and destruction. A powerful monster living down in the darkness growled in pain, impatient as day after day the music rang, loud in that hall, the harp's rejoicing call, and the poet's clear song sung of the ancient beginning of us all, recalling the Almighty making the earth, shaping these beautiful plains marked off by oceans, then proudly setting the sun and moon to glow across the land and light it. The corners of the earth were made lovely with trees and leaves made quick with life with each of the nations who now move on its face. And then as now warriors sang of their pleasure. So Hrothgar's men lived happy in his hall till the monster stirred, that demon, that fiend, Grendel, who hunted the moors, haunted the moors, the wild marshes, and made his home in a hell, not hell, but earth. He was spawned in that slime, conceived by a pair of those monsters born of Cain, murderous creatures banished by God, punished forever for the crime of Abel's death. The Almighty drove those demons out and their exile was bitter. Shut away from men, they split into a thousand forms of evil, spirits and fiends, goblins, monsters, giants, a brood forever opposing the Lord's will, and again and again defeated. Then, when darkness had dropped, Grendel went up to Herod, wondering what the warriors would do in that hall when their drinking was done. He found them sprawled in sleep, suspecting nothing, their dreams undisturbed. The monster's thoughts were as quick as his greed or his claws. He slipped through the door and there in the silence snatched up thirty men, smashed them unknowing in their beds, and ran out with their bodies, the blood dripping behind him, back to his lair, delighted with his night's slaughter. At daybreak, with the sun's first light, they saw how well he had worked, and in that gray morning broke their long feast with tears and laments for the dead. Hrothgar, their lord, sat joyless in Herit, a mighty prince, mourning the fate of his lost friends and companions, knowing by its tracks that some demon had torn his followers apart. He wept fearing the beginning might not be the end. And that night Grendel came again, so set on murder that no crime could ever be enough. No savage assaults quench his lust for evil. Then each warrior tried to escape him, searched for rest in different beds as far from Herit as they could find, seeing how Grendel hunted when they slept. Distance was safety. The only survivors were those who fled him. Hate had triumphed. So Grendel ruled, fought with the righteous, won against many, and won. So Herod stood empty and stayed deserted for years. Twelve winters of grief for Hrothgar, king of the Danes, sorrow heaped at his door by hell-forged hands. His misery leaped the seas, was told and sung in all men's ears. How Grendel's hatred began, how the monster relished his savage war on the Danes, keeping the bloody feud alive, seeking no peace, offering no truce, accepting no settlement, no price in gold or land, and paying the living for one crime only with another. No one waited for reparation from his plundering claws. That shadow of death hunted in the darkness, stalked 
Hrothgar's warriors, old and young, lying and waiting, hidden in mist, invisibly following them from the edge of the marsh, always there, unseen. So mankind's enemy continued his crimes, killing as often as he could, coming alone, bloodthirsty and horrible. Though he lived in Herit, when the night hid him, he never dared to touch King Hrothgar's glorious throne, protected by God, God whose love Grendel could not know. But Hrothgar's heart was bent. The best and most noble of his council debated remedies, sat in secret sessions, talking of terror and wondering what the bravest of warriors could do. And sometimes they sacrificed to the old stone gods, made heathen vows, hoping for hell's support, the devil's guidance, in driving their affliction off. That was their way, and the heathen's only hope, hell, always in their hearts, knowing neither God nor his passing as he walks through our world, the Lord of heaven and earth. Their ears could not hear his praise, nor know his glory. Let them beware, those who are thrust into danger, clutched at by trouble, yet can carry no solace in their hearts, cannot hope to be better. Hail to those who will rise to God, drop off their dead bodies, and seek our Father's peace.